Hey guys, it's Mr. Lin. I have a substitute today. Mr. Faulkner should be with you. So I'm going to review the process of creating the portrait overlay here in a video so you have something to reference. Um, or if you missed the class the day that we did this because you were sick or whatever. So you have something to kind of follow if you're, if you're needing a little bit of review. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So first step remember is to kind of look through your photographs and pick some portraits and some landscapes that you think you could kind of lay on top of each other with some transparency using those blend mode techniques that would look kind of good together. So you end up with kind of a resulting image that might look something like this. These are three that I made. This is the one that I'm going to kind of walk you through again. These are a couple of my students, Avery and Peyton Spencer, that uh, I tried with their portraits at some point. So look for some landscapes or something that you think would look kind of good as a background where you can kind of see through the, the picture and kind of combine them together to make a new creative image. So the first thing is to download some of them. Don't forget when you get images um, to use for that. So I can come into this. Uh, mm, my portrait album <clears throat> here it is so if I was going to download something like this make sure you come and hit the download button don't just drag and drop so you're getting the full size high resolution thing once you've got those then you might put them in like a folder on the desktop so you've kind of gotten some different things selected that I might use for this then I'm going to open in Photoshop the portrait like so and I'm going to open something that I could place in the background, the one I had done with the demonstration with what was the, this leaf picture. So um, what you can do is drag that one right into the Photoshop dock like that. And then let me open this up a little bit bigger so it's easier for us to see. And place it so you notice at first it's got this kind of x that allows you to like size it right from the start if you want bigger or smaller or to rotate it or whatever don't forget to hold shift so you're not distorting the image and then double click when you're ready to place that okay first thing i showed you guys was to unlock this so you can move around the background image if necessary you just double click there and click ok and then I don't think we'll need to do this, but just in case I'm going to rasterize this picture so it's no longer a smart object. So there may be some edits that need it would need to be rasterized for. So again, Command T if you kind of want to fiddle with the how these things kind of occupy the space. If you have a photo that's smaller than isn't fitting the whole thing, you may want to do that. You can also kind of play with uh, which layer. Uh, just ignore this which layer is in front, whether it's the portrait or the background. And remember, right on the canvas, if you're holding the command button, you can click the layers. You don't have to go back and forth from here. So those are the things kind of we reviewed to, to start with. Um, and then the thing I showed you was to how to make one of the pictures black and white by opening the adjustments panel and hitting the black and white adjustment. And then since we don't want the whole thing to be black and white, we just want the image of me or the portrait you choose to be black and white you can right click here choose the clipping mask so that little arrow appears and then just this is going to be black and white while the leaves are there now you may or may not want to do that remember these things i'm showing you are just kind of guidelines that you can experiment with there isn't necessarily a linear step-by-step -step process to this sort of thing so i'm just going to throw out some ideas for you to explore so sometimes i like to do it black and white because i think you're layering two pictures one on top of the other it tends to get kind of busy so it might be helpful to eliminate one variable that variable in this case being color so the next thing uh, we're going to do is try our blend modes the blend modes are located here so you, if you have one in particular you think might work well you can click on it usually though i just use the the shortcut of hitting the shift key and the plus button and you'll see right here this will cycle through these different blend modes and it'll affect how the images interact with each other and i can kind of keep going until i see when it looks pretty good i feel like this hard light one looks pretty good the other thing i suggested we try was to go back to normal here for a sec 
And sometimes you get different result if this picture's on top of the other one. In that case, I gotta move the black and white clipping mask down to there again. And then try the same thing. You're on this mode, you've got the move tool selected, just hit shift plus and you'll go through the blend modes and kind of see how those interact. You can hit minus to go back because that color dodge one looks kind of interesting. Overlay looks pretty good in this case. But I think I'm feeling like the, oops. I'm feeling like the best result I was getting was with the hard light option uh, with the portrait photo on top. So hard light here. And this one I don't want to blend mode on at all. So I'm going to take that off. Um, so you, you might get different results because you have different pictures. So don't count on what I'm doing to be like the same thing work well for you. So the next thing uh, we, we learned about was th throwing a mask on. So we can hit this button here to put a mask there. This button here that says add layer mask to put a mask here. And again, if we have our paintbrush tool, which is shortcut key is B, uh, and we have black and white as our default color. So even if you don't have black and white there, you can always get them back by hitting D. That'll get you the default white black and then X will toggle back and forth between those like that. So what we can do here is, um, you know, if we're, I'm going to simplify this. So we're just looking at this. If I have the black brush and the things that, are revealed are white here. If I paint on this, this will kind of hide part of it. If I switch to white, I'll, I'll get that back. Um, and we can do that on both of these layers, um, as long as you're clicked on the mask icon, not the photo icon. So you can kind of come in here and do this, switch and paint things in and out. So why would you want to do that? Well, again, the, the overlapping layers kind of tend to um, make the image just a little bit busier. So sometimes if you just want to clarify some things, like I could click on the leaf layer here in the mask and have my black there and just kind of paint this out so I can kind of see my face a little bit better so it's not overlapping as much. Maybe on the edge of the leaf thing, I don't want this to be this hard edge. So I can get my black brush. And I usually use a brush that's too large on purpose because it's... It, uh, I just painted on the actual photo, so make sure you're on the mask there, because it, it creates this kind of nice soft edge um, often. It might, might, might use a slightly smaller brush than that, but uh, I find kind of a oversized brush makes kind of like a nicer, gradual, less precise kind of transition, which is kind of nice. So now I don't see the edges there, and I'm kind of like uh, Still got these um, leaves kind of showing through in a cool way there on my sleeve. The other thing that you might experiment with is some other adjustments. So you can put on like a levels adjustment. And if you want to clip that also to the just the portrait layer, just add the clipping mask. Or if I put it underneath the black and white one, which is already clipped there, it, it automatically clips it to that. But I may want to like bring out a little more contrast in the picture and that might help define it a little more clearly or another fun one that you can try is the set the hue saturation adjustment or i'm sorry but you could do that if there's an area you want more or less color in i suppose since i brought it up i can do that um but we can open that guy up by by doing this so maybe if i want um well this won't make sense actually because it's on the it's on the black and white layer. So let me just move this huge saturation adjustment down to the leaves, right? Um, let's try that again. Let's kind of put it right there. So this is going to affect the leaves now. So if I open this guy up, we can make the leaves like, um, that's the hue one. I don't know if someone change the color, but you might. I don't know. You can take some of the color out so it's a little more subtle or put more color in. Um, that might be something you can try, but that's not actually what I was going to show you. This next thing is kind of cool. You can add a mask to the black and white adjustment. So here's the black and white adjustment, put the mask there. Um, sorry, it already has a mask there, so I don't need to add it. But what you can do is brush on the mask. So maybe I want the roses to have color again. So I got my black and the white stuff's hidden here. I can actually reveal some of the color in the roses to kind of bring that in. Or maybe I take a smaller brush, zoom in here, and just give my eyes just a little bit of color or something like that. 
kind of changes the feel of that. Maybe just a, gives it a little bit of life left in my eyes there on this kind of solemn image.